Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It is another repeat of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. I know the playing stage is now behind us, but felt like it's right to give it one more final wrap up. So today we're going to hand out some all pro honors from that full playing stage. Some positions a little bit harder than others to decipher who gets that top spot, but we got to start with the guy who's making off-season news already in the mid lane, despite not getting through to the main draw. You got to be talking about Maple in the mid lane, and that is now we're hearing retired Maple. And even with the you know crucial miss Silas abilities and some other little things that you can look through in games four and five in the ultimate series against BDS, it is without question that Maple was the best performing mid laner throughout these play in stage. And I also really like taking this little moment to do this all pro kind of still recap and look back at the play in stage. Cause you better believe Swiss stage starts this week. It's rapid fire. It ain't gonna stop when that gets going. So good to take this little breather and look back. And yes, looking at Maple now, knowing that he is rumored to be retiring at the end of this year, you know, six LMS titles for this guy. And he still, showed us that he's got what it takes to perform at this type of level to be a difference maker on the world stage maple what a fantastic career thank you for all the wonderful memories and it seems crazy quick to be even hearing about this it's like barely 48 hours since they were eliminated from worlds they could they were one team fight away from still preparing for their next opponent so we'll see what ends up going through with this offseason but yes uh, on a bunch of different picks the jace the nico uh i mean before some of those misplays on the silas and the talia we can highlight he was he was popping off throughout the majority of games for psg well deserving of that all pro even though they didn't get through jump to the other solo laner this has got to be the easiest one the most polarizing perhaps but you had to put out as the all pro for the playing stage even though Renekton and Scion games aside what he did on his pocket picks yes it's Adam even looking down at Kiaya's Cassante you still got to be throwing it down for your boy Adam in the top side it's a slam dunk it's a Darius slam dunk right there that's the way it is dunk master Adam in the top side you give him his God's champions, it's game over. Seems to be the way it is, at the very least, at this play-ins level of competition. Adam, able to step up, able to put forth this type of star energy that is built, you know, that BDS kind of has built around for him in this little time and has been developing in the LEC, rebounding. You get to see it here on the international stage, and he makes full use of this opportunity to showcase. And if you're talking individual impact, pressure, that one player have put at this playing stage it doesn't matter the position it's adam because there were two games at least that i can think of that were basically legit 1v9 performances and then you just talk about the attention now that he draws from opposing junglers and rest of teams whether it's in that pick ban phase or in the early game giving that top lane so much attention there, there's going to be a line where it teeters, but Adam has been painting this target on his back for the rest of the international community to say, okay, I want to take my shot at the guy that wants to run his mouth type of situation. Adam has answered it to this point. Yes, I know that competition level, those challengers, that's rising up quite a substantial bit as you get into this Swiss stage. But you look at how much of a difference maker he was just flat out in lane, out of his lane, the whole way through for BDS, you have to be siding with Adam as that all-pro top laner from the play-in stage. And he's already doing promo photos with 369. They're ready for the next round. They're both ready to dunk each other. You know Adam, whether it's Chatham, Badham, whatever it is. He's going to be there. He's going to be the exciting matchup to watch. Jungle was a little trickier to get through for this play-in stage. Really felt like there wasn't one individual that stood out and had an immaculate performance across. Everyone had a little bit of inconsistency. I know Sheo, we talked about he had some incredible smites, but the first half of that series against PSG, he really wasn't that solid. And even the guy who we decided to select, Mr. Levi for Gam, there's still some suspect early games, and you might even be arguing for BJ in this spot if he didn't 
have some uh, boneheaded in moments that kind of cost Team Wales the series. But that kind of paints the picture of what we're dealing with, with the all pro in this situation for the jungle from the play-ins is, yeah, someone like Bean J can be considered even with those type of downs, those type of lows against him. That's just a, a case of how much this was up for contention, up for grabs, because nobody was really running away with it the way that we do. Just look, we were talking about with Adam in the top side or Maple in the mid lane. You're looking at Levi and what he was able to do. And I think the big thing here is that level up and those signs of the Levi of old, the Levi we know and love from the VCS. That's what we started to see in that series against Team Wales. And I think that goes for a lot of the members of the Gigabyte Marines, but nobody more crucial for them than Levi in the jungle, getting things going, being that brain, being that control center, talking about what is going to go on, what plays we're going to be making here and how we're going to get accelerated. Levi was a big part of that, and he was fantastic in that series overall he, against Team Wales. Even with the extra attention and preparation Team Wales seemed to have put into some of the strategies against some of Levi's most infamous champions with the knock. And it feels like the entire playstyle of Gam is kind of orchestrated through Levi, where if you see him with the confidence to just keep pushing, keep putting on the pressure, diving, extending fights longer and longer, diving past inhib turrets, the rest of the team follows, and that is where Gam is at their peak. So still excited to see them advance to the next round. Then we move to this bot lane where, again, the 80 carry spot before games four and five uh, of PSG BDS. Waka was the easy guy to lock into this spot. We're still putting him there despite a couple positioning errors because uh, the aggression and confidence that we saw out of him for the majority of the tournament more than warrants his spot here. The majority of this play-in stage, pretty much up until, you know, game three, four, you're looking at Waka without question being the guy that we're talking about in this bottom lane. I think it's worth mentioning some of the other guys that are around in this competition. I don't think Crowney necessarily stepped up and ran away with it the way that you would expect or want someone of his potential to do so. Uh, you know, Artemis and Slater. Well, Artemis had it all the way until Slater basically dismantles him in that in that matchup. And then Slater, well, he didn't really have it until he did dismantle Artemis in that type of matchup. So can't be looking at them. It's got to be where we are right now. And it is one of those situations where you're talking about what Waka was able to do. And we got to be giving you the highlights of that outstanding play that he makes against P, uh, against our BDS in this important series. Yeah, it's single-handedly 1v3s the entire backline out of BDS. And I mean, there was some forward playing Zaya clips that we saw out of him diving Nexuses on uh, Kaisa picking up quadra kills, just a, a, an all around highlight reel. And we saw highlight reel plays out of him going back to MSI internationally as well. So even if Maple is stepping away from PSG, the team's in good hands with Waco as one of the pillars uh, for that squad. Lastly, the support spot. I think this one really shifted in uh, these finals because the engages out of BDS's LeBrov, the last three games were absolutely immaculate. I think the only guy you could probably put in the conversation for this uh, all-pro support spot is Pallet for Gam because especially of that set game. Oh my God. Goodness, that set game, yes, but it is not enough to take it away from your boy Lebrov, our boy, the man, the myth, the legend, the survivor of Team Vitality coming through and achieving things that the rest of Team Vitality, hey, where they at? They're, so, they they're not even here. playing or they ain't at Worlds? They ain't here, and it's your boy Lebrov taking this spot on the all pro play ins team fantastic job in this series overall i think even in the games where bds is losing lebrov is having a good effect for the team not necessarily anything that you're looking at on the negative side of things and then you get to where it turns around for bds the engages the fancy footwork from a support oh baby i love seeing that type of stuff really happy to give this one to lebrov and listen, he's been leveling up throughout the playoff run for BDS as well to close things out. And obviously during their really impressive spring, he was fantastic. So excited to see this promising young rookie now finally come into that potential that people were talking about. Uh, so a couple of PSG members, even though they didn't get through to BDS and then Levi, obviously, who were getting thrown through. So 
Last, last note on playing stage, because I think we were both fans of the format, getting best of threes right away. No best of ones at all in this playing stage. And how many times did Team Wales lose game one and come back? Or now you have a full reverse sweep. I think across the board, not too many complaints about this new format. Yeah, I think there might be something to be said about as far as how the draw and seeding is going to work out and how much of that you leave to the RNG factors of, you know, the, the draw and everything else and how much you want to structure it to prevent certain type of situations or matchups to happen and whatever. That's a different type of tinkering. But as far as what we had out there on the rift, as you mentioned, no best of ones, the best of threes right out of the gates, giving that opportunity for a series, for a team to breathe and have that type of pushback in these games was really important to me. And I think as well, the way that it built up to these final best of fives absolutely had the drama and the excitement. These play in stages every other year. We keep going through them, keep getting a little bit of iteration, keep getting a little tweak here or there. I think we're finding that secret formula to work pretty good. And yeah, the one gripe you might have is PSG and BDS matching up, only one of them getting through. But that's not really a format issue because BDS lost and went to losers. That's that's just unfortunate for PSG because I still feel like they were probably the second best team at the playing stage. But unfortunately, BDS drops to number two. So across the board, love it, playing stage. Hope the Swiss stage lives up to the hype. That's where we're headed next to do a full preview and breakdown of that. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people, as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.